Poštovani gledalci na kanalu Status televizije, gledate intervju sa posljednjim američkim ambasadorom u Jugoslaviji gospodinom Williamom Montgomeryom. So, so after talking about his Montenegrin uh, opportunities, I think uh, we should discuss a bit kind of regional issues. Uh, in the introductory part, I have mentioned your professional engagement in Bulgaria, Croatia and Serbia. What are the similarities of these three used to be so socialist regimes and did you have any kind of tricks in your sleeve when you come to Belgrade after being in Croatia and you know, Bulgaria? I, I think that they have a lot in common in this transition to a um, democratic form of government, a democratic way of thinking and establishing a, a a strong market economy that's competitive in the entire world. These are challenges for all these countries in this region, major challenges. And if you look at the reports done by the, the European Union or any other organization on these three countries, there's a lot of similarities, uh, whether it's uh, corruption issues, uh, problems with the judiciary, um, problems with uh, privatization process. Uh, all these things are very similar. Uh, it, it, so there are a lot of similarities. So sure. were, were you prepared enough when you got to Belgrade after Zagreb and Sofia? I, I, you know, I still to this day, right now, uh, will learn things about Serbia that I should have known 10 years ago, really. It's impossible for foreigners coming to a country to really know all they should. It's really impossible. The standard expression is it's sort of like peeling away layers of an onion. There's more and more layers before you can get to really... You have the same attitude the towards truth. Montenegro or you believe that you know us much better than... No, so. no, no. It's the same in all these places because the problem is as, as a uh, diplomat who doesn't live in the country, you don't know so many normal facts. I don't know, for example, uh, if, if you're married, who your kuma is, uh, etc. I don't know things like that. These things are very important here when you look at relationships and how decisions are made. What are the personal relationships? And if you just come into a, a, a situation cold, you don't know people's background. I don't know uh, you, you personally, but people like you will know the most amazing facts about 500 people going back generations. And, and, and you can recite uh, what somebody did five years ago, ten years ago, blah, 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 that the diplomats just don't know. And so a, a classic example, uh, uh, two of the people that I work most closely with in, in Belgrade at the time of the Gingrich government was Prime Minister Gingrich and uh, then the Deputy uh, Prime Minister of, of uh, Yugoslavia, Miroluba uh, Mir Labus. Labus. Um, I worked together with them very closely. They were both Democrats. They both wanted the best for, for uh, Serbia and at that time for Yugoslavia. And um, we did a lot together. But it turns out that they had a bad personal history. Um, things that happened long before I came. And what this meant was that at a certain time, their relationship got very bad. I didn't understand why it got bad. But everybody who was a Serb understood why it was bad because they had had a history. And it's that sort of thing that diplomats just don't know. And so I'm still learning. Okay, you have mentioned uh, ex-Prime Minister, Serbian Prime Minister Zoran Djindjic. In this book, uh, you mentioned his relation with the leader of Zemunski clan, Milorad Ulemek Legia. But is there any witness or is there any proof that two of them were really in contact? Well, there is Jinjic's own statement that, that the night before the October 5th uh, events that he had a meeting with 
Legia to get Legia to agree that the Red Berets would not interfere in, in the protest. Uh, there was a real fear on the part of the opposition of many, many uh, foreigners that Milosevic would use force to destroy this, uh, this protest. Uh, and so that, that uh, in Jinjic's own words, that event took place. It's known that Legia was present at uh, the Red Beret revolt and was a participant in the negotiations with Jinjic about bringing that event to an end. It's known that uh, his aide, uh, Cherry Yovanovich, had contacts with um, the Zemin gang when its leader was in, in prison, et cetera. So those things are known. Uh, it's known uh, of Legia's role in the actual arrest of Milosevic. Uh, so those things are known, but I will be the first to admit that uh, I don't know nearly enough, and, and uh, there's a lot that I don't know, that very few people do know that about all these things. Okay, uh, what was the complete role of the USA in fall of Milosevic? What did you, ex what did you offer Serbia in exchange for extradition of Slobodan Milosevic? Right, well, first of all, the um, decision to arrest, or sorry, to extradite Slobodan Milosevic was not an easy one for Jinjic. Uh, what he wanted to do was he wanted to try Milosevic in Serbia for crimes committed by Milosevic against the Serbian people. He thought this was absolutely the best way for the Serbian people to see what sort of ruler he was and what he did. Um, and so he was arrested, I believe, in, in late March or early May, and um, the uh, order was given to the prosecutors to look for the appropriate charges to prepare for a trial for Milosevic. Um, and after over two months, uh, Jinjic threw his hands up because the prosecutors had not been able to sort of put together a convincing case of serious charges that would work. And so he himself was concerned because he could only hold Milosevic in prison for so long and he could become a destabilizing factor in, in the region unless there was a convincing trial there. And so he then became more open to the idea of sending him to The Hague. At the same time, he realized the, the, the cost of doing so because there were a lot of people uh, in Serbia who, who absolutely hated The Hague, believed it to be a political organization biased against Serbia, um, and didn't want anybody sent there. And he knew full well that, that if he did this, if his government did it, that it would uh, incur a certain degree of unpopularity. And so what, what we tried to do is put together a package that would help to offset uh, this negative reaction by be being able to have him show the Serbian people that there were real benefits from cooperating with the West in terms of, of uh, financial assistance, in terms of How economic support, uh, et cetera. It was, it, it's, it's hard to say because uh, it involved, first of all, um, annual support given by a number of countries, including the United States, but it also involved um, a commitment to reduce the, the uh, the sovereign debt that Serbia owed to international organizations and to countries and to reduce the debt owed by Serbian state enterprises to foreign banks. So Serbia eventually got what you offered and Slobodan Milosevic ended in front of courts in Hague. Correct. Uh, for that court, uh, in a book, you say that it has too much freedom and very less instructions. Uh, also, you state in the book that the role of Carla del Ponte was counterproductive. 
Uh, how do you think that that kind of uh, attitude would relate uh, to relations of uh, countries of former Yugoslavia in long terms? Well, again, I, what, I, what I believe is that for the countries of the region, the International Criminal Tribunal, when it was formed, was designed to promote reconciliation and to give the peoples of the region a sense of justice. And I think in that task, it has failed almost completely because certainly the peoples in Croatia and the peoples in Serbia and a lot of the people in Bosnia, not all, but a lot, think that the uh, tribunal has been biased, unfair, political, and if anything, they, they have uh, not abandoned the indicted war criminals from their ethnic group in a way that the support for them has, has grown somewhat. And that in, in large part is due to how uh, Carla Del Ponte carried out her work, um, and specifically by coming to the region in a very aggressive way and demanding things. Every time she came, it made it harder for the governments of the region to cooperate with The Hague. I would also say that in retrospect, the, the, the length of time it took for indictments to be issued was far, far, far too long. I don't quarrel with the number of indictments at all. In fact, probably there should have been more um, to do justice. But when these indictments kept coming to democratic countries trying to get started, it diverted attention from the real issues of the economy, restructuring the administrative areas, the ministries, and turned all the attention right back to nationalistic questions. And it was, it was a, a, a detriment. <laughs>